This is a, in the ficus family is a rubber plant. So it's a, a ficus. This is called a pothos, P-O-T-H-O-S, and it, it'll be a vining plant that kind of vines down. This is a sansevieria or a snake plant or mother-in-law tongue. They all have the same name. So that's what's kind of fun. So um, that's why I kind of wanted to gauge your level of comfort with house plants. I'll explain more about the house plants themselves, but really, House plants aren't difficult to take care of. A lot of people say, oh, I kill, I kill every house plant. You don't have to kill them, don't worry. Most people kill them by giving what we call too much love, it's too much water. And so really a lot of house plants are about once a week water. Some less, some need more humidity like ferns. I don't have any ferns out here, but if you would have a fern that needs a little bit water, a little more humidity. Sun is not a problem. Most of these plants do not want direct sun just inside your house, inside area, is perfect for this kind of plant. Um, succulents, on the other hand, which you've got, we've got some succulents over here, like this guy's a succulent, he's called Panda. And these guys like it to be very, very dry. They're a desert plant. So they hold all of their water in their leaves and in their roots. So you don't have to water them very much because it holds it in there and feeds the plant as you need it. Yeah, he's soft, super soft, you can touch him. Ladies, touch all the plants you want because there's nothing to be afraid of with plants. Um, and they like very, very sunny. So that's the difference between house plants and succulents. Succulents want to be in a very sunny spot. Super sunny, uh, not direct light though because you don't want to sunburn them, but you want to, and plants can get sunburned. Um, especially when you're watering them. A lot of times when we overhead water here, we might leave um, water on the, on the leaves. And actually, if I have it in a very sunny spot, that creates a prism and actually burns and, and creates a sunburn. So you don't want to do that. Always when you're water, you want to try to water as much on the um, soil as you can. So when I say to water, that doesn't mean just give it a little bit of water. You usually want to give it a good soaking when you water it and then it can go that week. Um, indirect light means just this area, and this is just like no beams on it, normal living room, normal kitchen, something like that. Seconds, on the other hand, put those in a nice sunny window, and you'll do roll it with succulents. Okay. These guys, you could, they're so versatile. You could grow them outside in full sun, or you can grow them almost in a cave. They really will, You'll read a lot of things that says they need some, that say they need sun. I've got mine in the darkest part of my kitchen that has no light at all, and it thrives like crazy. And um, I have horrible windows in my own home that do not face any direction. I have an east-facing window, and all my west-facing windows are covered by the biggest, hugest silver maple tree that's known to man, I think. And so I have no shade coming in my west-facing window. So I have lots of varieties of these guys. Perfect for that kind of area. It doesn't need a lot of attention. It thrives on neglect. They love being neglected. They don't, don't mess with them. They also like to be something called root bound. So that was another note I wanted to have in here. Most of these plants can go into this four inch container. It's perfect for it. But also if you have a cute little six inch pot, you can pot them in that, give them a little bit of room to grow. It's fine. All of these plants can do that, except for this guy. This guy wants to be root bound and you can feel him, you can feel the roots in him and feel that pot. See how tough that is? And you almost feel those roots. It's fine. It's almost ready to go into a little bit bigger pot. So it loves, this guy is not ready. And you can feel he's more mushy. You don't feel his roots. He's not ready. He wants to still stay in this pot. So that's what I mean by root bound. You wanna keep it in a very, very tight pot then this plant grows up instead of out as much. And it keeps their leaves nice and stiff like this. I've only, I've had one Sansevieria in my life that I got three years ago and I've only potted him once up. That's it. Don't pot him very often at all. Um, over watering, this guy will kill this guy too. Otherwise, you can't kill these things. Just let it go. I think I've gone six weeks without watering before. They don't care. They really don't care. Now, I don't advise it, but but, but yeah, yeah, once a month, he's gonna be fine. He really is. If you see their leaves kind of going down like this, or you see mushy leaves on this type of plant, means it's gotten too much water. 
So another indication of too much water is yellowing leaves. This is a little bit of yellow, and I know this plant has been a little overwatered. He likes to dry out too. Most houseplants like to dry out before you water them. There's no hard and fast rule with houseplants. These are general rules that I give you. Um, if you're having success with a plant and you're doing something else, you know what I tell people? Keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, don't, you know. Only alarm me when you're like, Julian, I don't know what's going on. I have no idea what my plant is doing. I'll snap me a picture. I'll tell you what's happening with it. Now, sometimes you can get, um, another thing I want to tell you about pots, when you're potting a, a, um, a house plant, you definitely want to get a pot with holes. You want the water to be able to drain out. If you don't, and you create a lot of water in there, you could get root rot. And that means the roots are just soaking in there. They're just not doing anything. And so you see all of ours have holes. And this just has a little plug in here that you can pull out if you like that one. This one, which is my favorite, and I'm trying to buy more for the garden center, is attached saucers underneath. So this has got a saucer underneath to hold the water, and it's got a hole in there. This one has just an extra saucer up the side. So, um, so I'm trying to find more pots that do that. It's, um, you can take a pot that doesn't have a hole, but I would definitely leave it in its nursery pot, and then you can just place it into a pot that doesn't have a hole, then take it out when you need to water it. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, bugs. Sometimes plants get bugs. I'm gonna show you guys oh, common, common little critters that your plants can get. And so this is kind of what the underside of leaves will look like with some of these common household critters. What are the, um so that is called a mealybug. So it's like a little itty bitty bug. Now this is blown up, so you'll never see them this big. But you kind of get a white powdery kind of um, on the underside of your leaves sometimes. Um, sometimes this happens just because a bug has laid its little eggs in there and has done that. Sometimes it can be from overwatering. This is called spider mites, and that will happen a lot because of overwatering. Um, it can happen. It can happen just because something's flown in. If you keep, Are if you bring them outside. Dangerous? Nope, not at all. Okay. But not dangerous at all. The, none of these bugs are dangerous. They just could. If you didn't treat your plant, it could kill your plant. And then this is another one called aphids, and that's more of a flying little bug. But it looks like, if you blew them up, they kind of look like stink bugs. Just kind of ugly. Yeah, and again, a nice little powdery thing. So if you're examining the underside of your leaves and you see some of that, then you know to treat it. And what you want to treat with is to get especially spider mites and mealybugs off, the first thing you want to do is, especially spider mites, blast it with water. Try to get as much off. Then after that, take a cotton ball, some alcohol, rubbing alcohol, and just wipe off the underside of, and the top side of both of your of the leaves of the plant. That'll pretty much get rid of it. Then if you do, if you're still worried about it, I put some of these chemicals out. This is called neem oil. It's totally totally organic, doesn't do anything, but it keeps those bugs from adhering to the rest of your plant. So you want to spray your plants with that and you do it every 14 days. Then a lot of people like taking their house plants outside and then bringing them back inside for the winter. If you do that, and, and it's totally fine to do that, but I recommend this houseplant systemic insect control. It's just a little powder that you put into the soil about a month before you bring your plants in, and it kills any bugs, eggs, or larvae that have laid into the soil. It's nature, it just happens. It's not a big deal. This will kill for eight, eight weeks. So those are one of the things. Now, fertilizer. This is what you talked to. I was about to go into fertilizer before we started talking. This is the one that I recommend the best for indoor plants. It's called Grow, made by Espoma. It's organic. What I love about it is this little easy pour thing. You just turn it upside down. It fills this. You put it in a gallon of water. Water your plants. You want to do this in the growing season about once a month. So you just fill this, do it with a regular watering and just do it about once a month in the growing season. And growing season is really from April to probably about the 1st of November. 
then your house plants, even though they're alive, they're doing well, really don't need any fertilizing, they're in dormancy, just like everything else. It's winter, they're kind of shut down, there's not much growing happening, you really don't need to waste fertilizer on them. They're not doing anything anyway. So these are just some of the products I wanted to show you. Um, this really helps with any of these insects if you would happen to ever get them. I've never gotten them on any of my plants, so I'm pretty lucky, but I don't bring them in and out or anything like that. But you can get them, you know, you can get them from anybody, any one of us, we're, even though we're reputable, it's just nature, it just happens. So no worries, we can get rid of them for you. So that's kind of where we're at with those. If you are um, wanting to talk about like, well, how do you know when you're ready to repot a pot plant? Like I told you on these, it's super easy. You can kind of feel the roots. It's probably ready for about, this is a four inch. I definitely want to put it in a six inch pot. So I'd find a six inch pot. I'd pull it out. I would check that I would probably pull off as much dirt as I can. So I just have the roots left. I want to give it a fresh, fresh soil. You know, um, I had a friend that had a Sansevieria and she said, my grandma had this probably five, 10 years. And I'm like, Ooh, you may want to give some more nutrients. Besides that, a nice, jolt of new soil will really help it with its nutrients. So every few years you may want to repot your plants, even if they're nearly, really not doing a whole lot. They're kind of at their where their stage of stop growing and they're just kind of doing their own thing. You may want to repot them just to refresh. The best way to tell if your plant needs water is I get my finger all in there and I get down and I really feel it. If I'm feeling moisture, like I feel moisture. So I'll let you do that too. If you feel like wetness, cold, moisture, it doesn't, it's not really ready to be watered. So, and I feel, I get dirt on my finger. It's not ready yet. So you can do that, kind of dig in there and feel, you'll feel moisture in there. Okay, so the first thing you do is you gotta take the plant out. And you kind of wanna grip it a little bit tight, kind of hold it and you won't hurt it. And just squeeze and then pull at the same time. Can you get it? You did it, you did it. And you can set your plant down. And what you're gonna do, I'm gonna help you with this. We're gonna put a little bit of soil in here. And that's the organic. Let me see, sweetie, you got it. Oh, he's out, he's done. He's good. Yeah, so what we wanna do is we wanna put enough soil in there. We got enough soil in there. So now you're gonna take your little hands in here and you're gonna pull up his thing and you're gonna start putting soil in until you fill him up. Sometimes I look, and I gotta show you this part, I look for it being root bound. These are a pipe of plant I don't wanna be at root bound. I want those roots to start searching for nutrients. So what I do is I go like this, and I kind of scare up the roots, and they stop going in that circular pattern, and they're gonna go start looking for, and you can grab that, and you can fill up your pot. You could use the grow, a lot of people like liquid fertilizer, Mm, I'm a fan of the little balls. Okay. Yeah, okay. of the Osmocote. I've got some over there if you need to get any, or if you have it already. Yeah, we do have some. Yeah, Good. We got it from Perfect. Yeah, so it's just a tablespoon, it's a shaker thing. Easy, easy, easy. And you really, and it's got a no burn guarantee, so you really can't. Sometimes with um, fertilizers, traditional fertilizers, you could put too much fertilizer in and burn your plants. Mm -hmm. Osmocote, it's a slow release, it won't burn your plants. It's okay. very good. Most nurseries use it. She was wondering about now, it's okay. Sometimes these lose leaves like this, like this guy's about to fall off, which he did. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to take him home and just lay him out on a paper towel until his end like crusts over, like a scab if you fall off your bike, you know, and you get a scab on your skin. Yeah. Make sure you do that on him. And then he'll start growing roots. So in about two weeks, he'll start having roots. And what you can do after that is you can take that leaf and put it, as soon as you see the roots, you can put it in some soil. So take this guy home and I'm gonna fill you full of soil and then you're gonna put him in there. Okay? Cool. Is that cool? So that is called propagation. Really big plastic so you, we have the plastic ones, the super saucers, and this one might need a saucer underneath. So what I do, I go antiquing, I like doing that. I find like old plates and things. Or if you've got a mismatched plate at home, use that as a saucer. Okay. You know, yeah. you don't have to really go buy saucers. Yeah. You know, just find something fun at home, a fun plate or whatever you want to do, or go buy a saucer. Doesn't matter to me. But uh, that's what I do. I like using kind of, we all love doing it. We all use like, 
plates that maybe you've only have one or two of or something use that as a saucer yeah, underneath yeah, it's so easy yeah it's so easy to do